If you have watched any of my previous videos, you will have noticed that I prefer a keyboard-centric workflow, and I've configured my terminal setup with efficient tools like Vim and Tmux. But the moment I need to switch to another app, it kind of all falls apart, because the window management solutions on macOS don't support a keyboard-centric workflow very well. When you want to switch apps, you can hit Ctrl Tab and keep tabbing until you land on the one that you need. You can fumble around Mission Control with your mouse or you can search for the app using Spotlight. And when it comes to positioning or resizing windows, you are usually stuck reaching for the mouse again. None of these options feel efficient to me and the solution I really want is actually extremely simple. I just want one shortcut to instantly switch to a specific app and another one to position the window exactly where I need it. If this sounds like something you'd find useful too, stick around and I'll show you how to set it up. Let me quickly show you how the final solution that we are going to build looks like. We are essentially going to turn the tab key into a hyper key. Now the tab key is located very conveniently on the keyboard, it's very easy to reach. But when you hold it down it doesn't do anything. We can leverage this characteristic of the tab key to turn it into a hyper key and give it extra functionalities when you do hold it down. When holding down tab I can activate my app expose layer by pressing E and then with my right hand I can switch to a specific app. For example, K takes me to my terminal, J takes me to my browser, and I can instantly switch between them. So now I press K to go to my terminal, and if I press J, I go to my browser, and I can instantly switch between them very, very quickly. If instead I hold down Tab plus W, it activates my window management layer, and then the keys on the right hand become window positions. For example, if I want my Finder window to take up the left half of the screen, I can press Tab W H, now because I'm recording on a widescreen monitor and I'm only recording a portion of the screen, it actually takes up more than half of the screen in this case, but you get the idea. I can easily position the window and resize it using the keyboard shortcuts that you see here in this image. Alright, now let's actually talk about how to set this up. In order to do this, we need a tool called Carabiner Elements. Carabiner Elements is a keyboard customizer that basically allows you to remap any key on your keyboard. You can download it from the official website or you can install it with a brew command, brew install cask uh, carabiner elements. Once installed, it's going to ask for a couple of permissions that you need to grant, and I would also recommend restarting your Mac. Carabiner elements does have a GUI, it looks something like this, but we don't really need to worry about it. All the configurations are stored in a JSON file, and I prefer to edit that JSON file directly. So let's actually open up a terminal window, and here let's navigate to the location of the carabiner config, which is located in .config slash carabiner. As you can see there are a couple of contents here in my case. There's already the carabiner JSON. I think once you open carabiner for the first time it actually creates the JSON with the default configuration. But let's start on a blank slate and actually delete this file and recreate it with touch carabiner JSON. Now you can open it up with your favorite text editor. I prefer NeoVim. First, let's add a couple of global options here. So I want to be asked for confirmation before quitting the app. I don't want to check updates and I don't want to see the icon in the menu bar. Now below global, we're going to create a new section called profiles. And we're just going to create one profile in there that is called default profile. You could create multiple profiles, but we're just going to need one. Now inside of this default profile, we want to add something called as complex modifications. And those complex modifications have parameters that affect all of the modifications and then rules. The rules are the actual key remaps that we are going to set up. In terms of parameters, I want to add the following two. The first one is about how Carabiner determines if a key was pressed alone or in combination with another key. So if a key was pressed and within 200 milliseconds no other key was pressed, it means that it was pressed alone. The second parameter determines how Carabiner elements distinguishes between tabbing a key and holding it down. In this case, if a key was held for less than 200 milliseconds, Carabiner knows that we're just tabbing it. In our case, the tab key, we just if we just tap it, we still want to emit a tab event. And if we press it for more than 200 milliseconds, Carabiner will interpret this as holding down, and then it should perform another action that we'll set up in the rules. Now let's go ahead and add our first rule. Let me center this. Now each rule has a description of what it does and then it has a set of manipulators which determine exactly its behavior. In the manipulators you can see the key from. This is the key on the keyboard that we would like to remap. Then there's to. This is the new key, what happens when you press it. 
what it should do instead. And then there is two if alone. This is what should happen if the key is pressed alone, as determined by our if alone timeout threshold that we said earlier. So in this case, this specific rule maps the caps lock key to control when it's held. So this is like the normal behavior of it and escape when tapped. And tapped basically means it was pressed alone, right? So in this case, we have the two section where we say it becomes the left control and then the two alone where it becomes escape. In the from section, we also specify modifiers. Modifiers are the shift, alt, control and command keys. And in this case, we say it doesn't matter. Just if any other modifier is pressed, it should still work. Now let's get rid of the trailing comma and save this file. And now if you open up Carabina again, you could be prompted with a message like this, that your keyboard type is still missing. I select NC keyboard. Now, because we just selected our keyboard, it's a setting that we made and Carabina also modified now the JSON file. So if we save this again, then we could get this warning saying that the file has changed since reading it. Do you really want to write to it? So let's press no in this case and exit out of this file and reopen this file. Now you can see it has changed. So our complex modifications and our rule is still here, but um, because we just selected our keyboard, Carabina Elements made this modification where it added our keyboard type. But this is nothing to worry about. So let me just save this file to apply formatting. In Vim you can scroll through files with Ctrl D and Ctrl U. Now if I hold down Caps Lock, it registers a control and then if I press D, as you can see it goes down and if I press U it goes up. So our key map seems to be working. Now let's add the modification that makes our tab key a hyper key. So we can add it right under the first rule and create another entry here that has a description again and manipulators. So the description is remap tab to hyper key when held and tab when tapped. So again we have a from property here which is the tab key that we want to modify and under normal circumstances we map it to this functionality. In this case we want to set a variable with the name of hyper and it should take the value one. The two after key up key here specifies what happens when the tab key is released. In this case, we want to set the same hyper variable, but the value should become zero. And finally, if the tab key is pressed alone, as determined by the if alone threshold that we set up earlier, then we just want it to act as a normal tab key. So when tapped, we just have the normal tab key functionality. And if we hold it, then this hyper variable will be set to one in the background. To confirm this, we can use another tool that shipped with Carabina Elements called Carabina Event Viewer. And this basically keeps track of the key presses and key events in the background so that you can easily debug your config. Here, let's go to the variables section. And as you can see, there is the hyper variable that we configured. Currently the value is 0, but if I press tab, then it becomes 1. And when I release tab, it becomes 0 again. So this is our base layer. Now let's also add the expose layer. So right under this complex modification, let's add the hyperkey sublayer E. Again, we have a description here, we have manipulators here, and now inside of the manipulators of this layer, we put this. Now let me explain. We basically want to have the same effect. If we press tab plus E, then a variable which we want to call hyper sub layer E should be activated and if we release it, it should be set back to zero. Now inside of this modification, we have a couple of manipulators. The first manipulator toggles this hyper sub layer E variable and there are a couple of conditions attached to it. So this should only work if the hyper variable has the value one, so that means tab is pressed, and the hyper sublayer W, which is our other hyperlayer, remember we have a tab plus W and tab plus E. So only if the hyper sublayer W is off, then this should it should be possible to activate this. So when these conditions are met, then we want to map the key code E with any modifiers that are pressed in addition to that. To let's bring this to the top to set the variable hyper sublayer E to one, and if the key is released, then we set the hyper sublayer E variable to zero. Now let's bring back our 
Carabiner Elements Viewer, head over to Variables, and now if we press Hyper, as you can see, this will still toggle on and off. And we now have this Hyperlayer E variable here as well, which is currently zero. So what if I press Tab, you can see the Hyper variable will be turned to one. And if I press E now, this Hyper Sublayer E variable will be one as well. And if I release E, then it will be zero. And if I release Tab as well, then the Hyper variable will be turned off. And if I just press E, nothing will happen, which is exactly what we want. Right under the manipulator to set the hyper sublayer E variable, we also want to set the manipulators to actually switch between the applications once this layer is activated. So here let me add one more. I bring this to the top. So as you can see, this manipulator is called Open Brave, and Brave is my web browser. Basically, when this is triggered, it should open the Brave web browser. So the conditions for this are that the hyper E a hyper sublayer E variable is set to one. And under the from property, again, this is the key that we want to map. In this case, it's the J key on the hyper sublayer E. And we want to map it to a shell command, actually, which is the open Brave app shell command. And this will open the Brave app. And if it's already open, it will just bring the app to the foreground. Let's actually also add another app, which is Westerm. And it's just a copy of the same manipulator. We call it open West term. Again, the condition is that the hyperlayer E is activated. This time we want to map the K key and we want to map it to the shell command West term. And for other applications, you would just repeat this process and add more entries here. At this point, you might start to notice that this configuration process is quite repetitive. There are certain tools that help you manage this JSON file with a GUI interface. You can find them on the Carabina Elements website. But of course, you could also write your own script or your own tool that helps you manage this JSON more easily and uh, avoid the repetitive parts for you. Maybe that's a nice weekend project idea. But for now, let's save this file. And now if I press tab EJ, it brings me to the browser, and if I press tab EK, it brings me back to my Westerm terminal app. Now we could add all the other apps here as well, but it's just going to be more of the same, and I think you get the idea. So now let's add the window management layer. Again, right under the expose layer, we want to add a hyperkey sublayer W. Again, we have manipulators here, and here we want to add the manipulator first to trigger the hyper sublayer W variable. So this is going to be the entry for that, toggle hyper sublayer W. The conditions for this are of course that the hyper key is activated, which is tab, and then the hyper sublayer E variable, which is the other layer, needs to have the value zero. Then we have here the from key, and it's of course the W key, and we want to map it to the variable hyper sublayer W, which will take the value of one once it's pressed. And when we release it, it will set this variable back to the value of zero. Next, under this manipulator, we want to add all the entries for our window management. This entry here is to make our window cover the left half of the screen. The condition for this is, of course, that the hyper sublayer W is activated. And then we have the H key and we want to map it to another shell command which is this open rectangle execute action left half. This shell command is of course not a native Mac shell command. Unfortunately, Mac doesn't provide this functionality out of the box, but there's a small utility called rectangle, which gives us exactly that functionality. Let me show it to you. Now here we are on the GitHub of rectangle. And as you can see here, rectangle is a tool to move and resize windows on macOS with keyboard shortcuts and snap areas, which is exactly what we need. Now if we scroll down a bit in the readme, we see the UI of this tool. As you can see, these are the different positions where you could put your windows. It already has some pre-configured shortcuts and you can also change them in the app itself. The thing is, it does not allow you to use the tab key as a modifier. It only supports traditional modifiers like the alt key, shift, command and control. So we're not really interested in this part of the application, but if we scroll down a bit further, this is what is actually interesting to us. Execute an action by URL. So this is exactly what gives us the command that you've seen earlier. We can run the rectangle execute action and then the name of the action. And here you can see all the different values that we could put here. So for example, we could execute the action to put the window in the left half, in the right half, center half, 
center third, we could maximize height, make it smaller, make it larger, all these kind of things. You can choose the actions that best support your workflow. And then here you have the example shell command that we're going to use in the Carabiner config. So now let's go back to our terminal. And now the shell command makes a little bit more sense. I recommend installing rectangle with brew. Now if we go down a bit here, I've actually already added uh, the other window actions here. So we have window right half and then it's just more of the same. We are always going to check the condition, is this hyper sub layer W activated? And if yes, we have some kind of key code and then we map it to the rectangle shell command. So here we have right half, we have center half, then we have uh, window maximize. I have a couple more that I shared in the images initially. If you want, you can replicate the same, but for the purposes of demonstration, I'll just leave it at that for now. All right, now let's test if this is actually working. Let me bring up event viewer again. And now as long as I hold tab, I can switch between the W and E, the window management and expose layer. And now if I press tab W H, for example, it will put the window in the left half of the screen. And if I press L, it will put the window on the right half of the screen. If I press enter, it's going to maximize. And potentially we could do all the other rectangle actions that you've just seen. All right, that's all I wanted to show you today. As always, you can find a link to my entire config in my dot files, link in the description box down below. And I wanted to shout out two videos that inspired me to create a config like this. One is from Link Kazu, Configure Caribbean Elements in macOS. And the other one is from Max uh, Stoiber, How I Programmed the Most Productive macOS Keyboard Setup Ever. They both have excellent configs and I'm sure you get a lot of inspiration for your own setup if you watch these videos. So shout out to them, check them out as well, leave a like and subscribe and uh, see you next time. Bye.